Hello everyone and thank you for watching today's video. Today I'm going to talk about a thing called gluten and what problems can some people get after eating gluten. As you know, it's a, um, it, if you don't know, then it is a protein which is contained in many different um, cereals or grains. The cereals or grains which are very, very rich in gluten are wheat, rye and barley. There are other cereals as well or grains which have got slightly lower amount of gluten, but they're not gluten free. There are certain cereals or grains which have got no gluten in them, like rice, uh, corn flour, uh, cornmeal, soya, lentils, buckwheat, etc. They have got no gluten in them. So now we are going to talk about what problems can some people get when they eat gluten. So the main problems that uh, uh, people like us can get after eating gluten is one is called gluten intolerance, one is called celiac disease. There is a significant difference between the two and that's very important to know. Gluten intolerance basically means whenever somebody eats um, anything which contains a lot of gluten or some gluten, they, their body doesn't like it. So they get bloating, they get um, tummy pain, they get diarrhea, they get constipation. However, in this condition, no harm is done to their body. Their body does not come to any harm long term or short term other than getting those symptoms. However, celiac disease is different. First of all, celiac disease is not an uncommon condition. It is common, maybe one in 100 people, 1%, 2% people suffer from celiac disease. It can happen in any age. It can happen in infants when they are within a year old. It can happen or it can happen later on in life after the age of 40. So today I'm going to focus about celiac disease. Before we talk about uh, celiac disease, I'll just briefly touch the immune system in our body. What is immune system? Nature has given us many defenses in our body to stop the invasion of bacteria, viruses, um, um, fungus, etc. into our body. These are basic defense mechanisms in our body. The commonest in front of it is the skin. So the skin protects any bacteria going in because the skin is made out of a special material. Similarly, the other place of bacteria going in is our digestive system because we eat food and we, uh, most of the food that we eat has got bacteria in it because it's not sterile. The food goes in, but stomach has got acid, as we discussed in our previous videos, and that will kill the bacteria. Same thing when we breathe in with the air, bacteria go in, but our lining of our windpipe and our lungs have got special cells which kill these bacteria that go in. So at every level, body has put defenses to stop the bacteria and other harmful things hurting us. However, sometimes these barriers are crossed by these nasty things like bacteria and viruses and they go into our blood. Once they go into our blood, body has got another defense to protect us and that is called the immune system. Now, if say for example, this is a bacteria which is trying to come into our body and somehow find its way inside the body, like into our bloodstream, there are cells in our bloodstream which are called immune cells. They're usually white blood cells, but anyway, they're called immune cells. When they come in touch with these bacteria, they get all excited. When they get excited, they produce like little babies. They produce what we call antibodies, which are like little babies made out of these, uh, from these uh, cells. And these antibodies are directly responsible, they will go and attack that bacteria over here and all of them will attack the bacteria until the bacteria is dead. And that's how our body in essence defends itself from nasty things like bacteria and viruses. So how does immune system comes to play in celiac disease? Now, as I spoke in my first, um, I think it was my second video on the series, if you look at it, this is, I've drawn a little piece of small intestine, yeah, which is a small gut, um, which is uh, duodenum, uh, jejunum and ileum. So between our stomach and uh, before the start of a large intestine of the colon, in between is a small intestine. 
inside the small intestine there are little threads which you can only see with the microscope sticking out they are called villi yeah now these villi are extremely important they are like you have threads sticking out of a towel they are extremely important to help us absorb all our nutrients so minerals iron protein carbohydrates fats if these get damaged then absorption of these minerals and these uh, vitamins and these uh, nutrients into our bloodstream from the small intestine gets severely uh, hampered gets severe problems and patient will start getting problems in celiac disease what happens as we saw earlier in my picture before that to stimulate the immune system to make the immune system all excited there has to be a trigger not trigger in many cases we don't know but in some cases we know in my previous picture the trigger was the bacteria which came into our body and the immune system got all excited gave rise to antibodies they killed the bacteria now in patient with celiac disease what happens that trigger is the gluten that we eat in our diet or these patients eat in our diet in their diet why does the body become sensitive to gluten nobody knows the answer i think i certainly don't know and i think there are lots of theories behind it but this condition celiac disease is more common in patients who have diseases in which they have immune problems already like type 1 diabetes thyroid problems down syndrome etc more common in those patients so when the, the individual eats gluten say they eat wheat uh, like bread or something the body it it comes into the body into our mouth into our stomach and into our intestine and what it does instead of being absorbed like a normal gluten will do in most people it excites these cells the immune cells and those immune cells start producing antibodies and those antibodies are targeting not the gluten but they are targeting the small intestine and which part of the small intestine are they targeting they are tar targeting these little threads that are sticking out like little um, hairs sticking out called the villi which are most important in the function of the small intestine and when they keep attacking this lining the threads disappear so you can see the lining of the small intestine becomes all flat and when it becomes flat the patient cannot absorb what they are supposed to absorb as a normal person so they cannot absorb nutrients they cannot absorb vitamins they cannot absorb iron etc etc and all the problems start so this brings us to the symptom that one can get from celiac disease the patient get bloated tummy gets very blown up like a balloon and they get diarrhea or constipation you know some patient get more diarrhea some patient get more constipation now symptoms from down here they normally don't happen in gluten intolerance they only happen in celiac disease severe weight loss is very common low blood count is very common especially low iron levels low vitamin b12 levels and folate levels they can go down they get a very special skin rash which got little blisters on it and they also get brittle bones they are very common symptoms now in young children these symptoms are very difficult to diagnose because children can't speak you know some people think they are not responding to the the milk properly milk is changed etc etc however it is more difficult to diagnose in young children but the problem with the young children is when all these things are happening they can't grow properly so a 2 year old child will look like a 6 month old child because they haven't grown properly their teeth are not developing properly their bones are not developing properly pregnant women um have very small babies uh, sometimes women struggle to get pregnant with celiac disease they are the main symptoms of celiac disease so how is it diagnosed celiac disease uh, first and foremost it's very common in in people who have a family history of celiac disease so their mother their father their brother sister might have celiac disease so they have a high possibility of having celiac disease certain condition like type 1 diabetes these are the people with diabetes who require insulin to control their diabetes some patients who have got special thyroid problems some people who have got down syndrome they are at high risk of developing celiac disease 
it can be diagnosed with a blood test. In blood tests, they look for the antibodies they uh, release in their blood uh, from uh, being exposed to gluten. Normal people don't create those antibodies against gluten, but celiac patients will do. Patients who have got gluten intolerance, they will not have those antibodies in their bloodstream. So that's the difference. Lastly, but not least, they will have a camera test which will be arranged by the doctor. So endoscopists put the camera down from the mouth into the small intestine, into the stomach, into the small intestine, where they take samples to look at those little threads I showed you. And the damage to those little threads under the microscope or the villi will confirm they have got celiac disease. But it is extremely important that the correct diagnosis of celiac disease is made especially with these two tests, it is very important that the patient is still eating gluten. If they are on a gluten-free diet, then both of these tests, despite patients having celiac disease, might come back as negative or might, might be completely normal. So what is the treatment for celiac disease? To summarize it, it just means do not, do not, do not eat gluten. Because if you eat something which contains even a small amount of gluten, it will damage the body. It will damage the small intestine and you will have long-term problems. One thing I did not mention about the complications of celiac disease, which is very uncommon though, but more common in patients with celiac disease, especially if they're not well controlled, they can develop tumors of the small intestine, which normal people hardly ever develop. So it's very important to stay on a completely gluten-free diet. There are few people with celiac disease, they have got a celiac disease called refractory celiac disease, a complex name, but it basically means despite having a gluten-free diet, their disease does not respond properly. These people require further treatment like steroids, etc., and they usually refer to specialist center and other conditions need to be ruled out in their case. Uh, because celiac disease might not necessarily be um, the cause of all their symptoms. So I hope you enjoyed this video and gave you some information about celiac disease. I hope to see you next time. Thanks for watching.